Anyway, that wraps up this episode of Reds Effects. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next one. Well, that wraps that up. <laughs> what a run. Grant? <laughs> um, what are you doing, man? Hello? Ah yes, this is right. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And yep, you guessed it, we're still not doing the solid helmet effect. In fact, until I actually post that video, I'm just gonna start playing this clip. Yeah. So last week on The Flash, we found our last bus meta, and of course, we got the pocket dimension effect. And a whole bunch of you requested it, so I thought I might as well tackle that before I jump back to the aforementioned Star-Lord helmet effect. So, that's what we're doing today, guys. Now, in order to complete this effect, you need to head to filmlearn.com slash downloads and grab the download pack, which includes our pocket dimension animation. And it also includes a couple of stills from different perspectives, so you can have a play with them on your own. Now, normally I would include the Cinema 4D file, but it was actually made in Cinema 4D release 19 using the Veroini, I'm not sure about the pronunciation on that one, fracture feature, and if you've got Cinema 4D Lite, or you've got a Cinema 4D version that is lower than release 19, it's just not going to work. So I just thought I'll skip that part, and if you actually do want the model, just message me down in the comments. You'll also need to shoot your actor on a green screen, pretending to come out of the pocket dimension, and possibly go back in. Now, if you don't want to shoot them on a green screen, you can also rotoscope them out, but since I don't want to do that, I'm shooting mine on a green screen. But feel free to torture yourself. Now, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects. Well, I deserve that. I have my comps set up and all ready to go. As you can see, I already have my actor keyed out, as well as my background layer underneath my actor. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is add my pocket dimension animation short from the project menu. Let's drag and drop that in under my actor layer. As you can see guys, since it's 4K, it is way too big. So let's hit S and scale it down to match my actor's scale in the scene. And there we go. Let's also adjust the position. I'm going to have this aligned to the right of the comp right here since my actor is on the right side of frame. Now here's a tip gang, having this 4K animation in your comp is really going to slow down your render time and your preview times. So before we move forward, let's solo that animation by clicking this button right here. And then I'm going to render that out with an alpha channel. So let's hit Ctrl M and add it to the render queue. And from there, we'll click lossless. And from the drop down menu, I'm gonna select quick time. And then as we move down to format, I'm gonna make sure animation is selected. And finally, I'll set this to RGB plus alpha. Let's now render that out and import it back in with a funny sound effect. <coughs> Done. We can now delete our 4K version of the animation and replace it with a lower res version like so. From there, we need to offset our actor footage a little since the portal needs to open fully before our actor appears in frame. So let's scrub along until the portal is full size. Right here looks good. Let's then drag our actor footage to start here. Next, it's time to start layering effects on our actor footage. So let's firstly select that layer, right click and pre-compose it and hit OK. Let's then open that pre-comp and get to work. Firstly, let's head to effect, color correction and add exposure. Now all we want to do here is blow the image out a little bit just to sell the idea that the actor is coming out of somewhere bright. So let's find a level you're happy with, mm, 2.5 looks pretty good to me. We'll then hit the stopwatch on exposure, then skip ahead a few frames, say 7 or so, and then I'm going to crank it down to 0. From there, let's head back to effect, stylize and add a glow. We'll set this to alpha to turn it into an edge glow, and I'm going to crank the radius up to say 95. We'll then hit the stopwatch on intensity, skip ahead those same seven or so frames and crank it down to zero. Last step, let's hit T to bring up opacity, crank it down to zero, hit the stopwatch and you guessed it, skip ahead those seven frames and back up to 100%. And this is what we're left with. 
I know, it looks lame, but let's keep going. So our next tip is to start adding displacement maps to our scene. And we're gonna start with adding one to our portal animation. Now before we do anything, I wanna stress this point guys. If you're working with displacement maps in After Effects, you need to pre-comp any layers you plan to displace or any layers you plan on using as a source for your displacement. Now, why is that? Because the displacement effect doesn't see the scale, the positioning, the rotation, any of those settings that you've put on that layer, any of it. It only sees the original file. So if you've say scaled it down and you haven't pre-comped it and checked move all attributes into new composition, it's gonna look really weird and not work at all. So make sure you've done that. Thankfully, I've already rendered out and pre-comped my actor footage and my portal animation and background have no scaling or positioning data on them, so we're good to go. So let's select our portal animation, head to effect, distort and add a displacement map. Now it's also very important when you're adding a displacement map to check wrap pixels around. Otherwise you're gonna get a bit of clipping around the edges and that doesn't look good at all. Let's set the source to our actor pre-comp and turn that layer off. And then we'll adjust the horizontal and vertical displacement until we're happy. If we scrub back and forth on the timeline, that looks pretty good. From there, I'm gonna head to just after our actor comes out of the portal, around about here. We'll then hit the stopwatch on both adjusters, head forward, say five frames or so, and crank them both down to zero. We can now turn the actor layer back on. Now this guys might be a subtle effect, but I like to add it. Let's now move on to the background. Let's select our background layer, head up to effect and add another displacement map. This time, let's set the source to our portal layer and let's turn off that portal layer for now. Now, all we need to do here is adjust the horizontal and vertical again until we're happy. That looks pretty good to me. Let's now turn back on our portal layer and change the transfer mode to screen. Now, it's time to add some highlights to our portal. So let's head to effect, color correction and add exposure. Now, all we have to do here, guys, is play with exposure, offset, and gamma until we find the right amount of refraction coming through on our portal. You can have as little or as much as you like here, gang. This looks pretty good to me. Next, well, we need a flare, right? I mean, come on, we always need a flare. So, I'm gonna grab our flare short from the project menu, drop that in below my active footage, and change the transfer mode to either add or screen. And then, I'm gonna position it into place like so, and maybe scale it down. Now, I'm going to duplicate that and then place it on top of my actor. Then I'm going to hit T, hit the stopwatch on opacity, head along the timeline to the point where my actor is fully intact, <laughs> right here, and then I'm going to set the opacity down to zero. Now guys, this sells the illusion that the actor exiting the portal is obscuring the light from the flare once they're fully out of the portal. Now one last thing I'm going to do is add a shadow beneath that actor. So let's duplicate the actor footage, Head to Effect, Perspective, and add a drop shadow. Let's add a bit of distance, a little softness. We may play with the opacity a little bit, and then we're gonna set it to shadow only. And then finally, we're gonna drop that below our portal. Almost done, gang. Our last step is to add a bit of distortion to the background when the portal opens and closes. And we'll be doing that with a bulge. So with our background layer selected, let's head up to Effect, Distort, and grab a bulge. Wow, that sounded wrong. Now, so, the bulge, right? Let's firstly solo the layer, like so. We'll then expand the bulge to take up the whole frame. Now, I'm gonna move the center point to where my portal originates from, right here. And from there, I'm gonna set the bulge height to zero and hit the stopwatch. I'll then move ahead, say, four frames or so, and crank it up to around 0.4. Let's then move ahead on the timeline until our portal starts to shrink right about here. Add another keyframe. We'll then head a few frames after it fully closes right here and set it to zero. Now I'm gonna add a little bounce here. So let's skip ahead one frame and set it back up to 0.1. And finally, I'm gonna skip ahead three frames or so and set it back down to zero. Now if we check out a preview, the end result looks like this. And that, my friends, is another effect. Done. Out of all those steps, and you get something like this. So guys, that's my take on the pocket dimension effect from The Flash. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna get out of my very clever Edmund Gauss costume. I'm not really wearing a costume. I just wore a garment. I didn't wanna get changed. 
And of course, it goes without saying, a massive thanks to Uwe's over at the Red Alert channel for being a good sport and jumping in for a cameo on this effect. You can check out his channel right here. And yes, if you can see the image behind me, I have seen the Venom trailer, and no, I am not doing that effect. Now, just before we go, guys, if anyone was wondering about that sweet title card that I had at the start of the episode, that's actually my Video Hive pick of the week, and that's from Better Heart Production and their Vintage Title Project. There's 10 customizable titles, all in sweet 4K. If you want to pick that up, just click the affiliate link in the description below. You'll be helping to support the channel and get yourself a sweet title card pack. So guys, if you did enjoy this episode and you're looking forward to the Star Lord helmet effect, please smash that like button, I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, why not hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film on an episode. I got two other episodes right over here. I've got a playlist up here. My social media crap is above my head. And I'm looking forward to the flurry of Avengers Infinity War effects that are going to come my way. And until I see you again, guys, on the other side, Thanos demands your silence and keep learning.